So have you ever wondered how much money a real estate agent actually makes? Believe it or not, a lot of people think real estate agents are killing it and bringing in tons of money that they make so much money off of a home sale. And the reality is it doesn't quite work that way. So in this video, we're going to break that down. We're going to break down how an agent actually gets paid, as well as what if you were an agent and you sold one house a month? All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how do real estate agents actually get paid? Because a lot of people don't fully understand this whole concept. So a seller agrees to list their home with a brokerage and pay a commission to the agents. Now you'll notice I say that the seller agrees to list with a brokerage because a lot of people think that they list it with an agent. The agent is the facilitator of it, but the brokerage actually owns the listing and they're the ones that the seller actually pays. So it is the broker who actually determines how much commission the agents get. Now that amount might range between three and 7% of the sales price total for that commission. It's gonna vary from state to state, person to person, as well as country to country, because every country does it a little bit differently. And then what's gonna happen is that broker will decide to do what's called a co-broke, which is to pay the other agent a certain percentage as well. It's gonna come out of that. So it might be half, for example. So 3% would be one and a half, seven would be three and a half percent. But there is no set thing on that either. It could be something as they do a commission for 6% and only pay out 1%. It's totally up to the brokerage and to the agent who creates the deal. But it is important to understand that there is no set amount, no matter how much people say, oh, my commission is typically this percent. That might be what somebody asks for, but at the end of the day, the homeowner can negotiate this when they list their home. They can just say, hey, I'm only gonna pay 4%, I'm gonna pay 7%, I'm gonna pay 6%. They'll agree to what the agent asked for, but ultimately it is up to the homeowner to decide what percentage they plan to uh, pay out at the time of the sale. Now let's just take a typical home sale. There's gonna be two real estate agents involved. One is going to be the listing agent who represents the seller. And then we have the selling agent who represents the buyer. Now it is possible to do what's called a dual agency, which is to represent both the buyer and the seller, but it is not as common as people think it is, especially in today's internet world. So many people can search for homes online and then decide which homes they wanna see. Therefore, then they reach out to an agent and say, hey, will you represent me? Um, but occasionally it does happen, like someone comes into an open house or something like that, but it's not as common. And for today's example, we're just gonna say that there's two agents involved and you are representing one of those two people. Now, let's just say a typical home runs $200,000. This might be different in your area. Some people will have homes for a lot less. Some people will have homes for a lot more. We're just gonna use 200 so that we have a basic idea. Now the seller has agreed to pay a 6% commission and the broker has decided to do a 50-50 split. So each side is going to get 3% in our example. So 200,000 times 3% for that one individual is gonna come out to $6,000. But wait, they really don't make all that money, regardless of what people think. They just calculate it out real quick and go, oh my God, look, they're making $6,000. It doesn't quite work that way. So let's see where the money actually goes. Now, a brokerage is going to take their cut. Remember, they're the ones that ultimately own it. So they're gonna keep anywhere between 10% and 40%. Some keep more, some keep less. It just depends. And we're gonna take a look at those different examples here in a moment. Now, if somebody works with a team leader, like say they work underneath another uh, agent who is considered the team leader, who's the one that goes out and gets the leads, they're gonna get compensated. In most cases, they take anywhere from 25 to 50% of that deal because they're the ones that are generating the business for the people. And you really need to understand teams really well if you decide to become a real estate agent, as a side note, because some of them only take money off of the deals they help you get, and some take it off whether it's your lead or not. In which case, that means that if you go out and you hustle and you find a new customer, you could be giving up half your commission to this team later because you are working on a team. So make sure you really understand it's probably the number one thing that disenfranchises people against team leaders. It's important that you understand how that actually works. Then there's gonna be some miscellaneous other fees the broker might co collect. It might be $150, $500, $1,000 if you have office space, don't have office space. If they have a website, if they have stuff, a lot of times different brokerages have fees that they collect at the same time. Now, let's look at big franchise type brokerage. And these ones typically will have team 
leaders with them. And these will have money that also gets paid out to a franchise. So I'm not even going to show that percentage, but in some cases that's 5%, 6% on top of all these other numbers that we're talking about. So make sure that you really <laughs> look at that if you have one. They've sometimes have changed the way that they've done it. So I'm going to leave it out of our example for right now, but just know that there could be an additional 5 to 6% coming out on top of the whole thing. Now, let's say you do have a team leader and that team leader collects 30%. So you can take that 6,000 times 30%, which means you're giving the team leader $1,800 off of that 6,000. And a brokerage is going to take 20% off of what you get. So you're going to get 4,200, which means they're going to take 20% of that, which means an additional 840 is going to be paid to the broker. And let's just say they have miscellaneous office fees of 150 bucks. That means your 6,000 minus the 1,800, 84, and 150 means the agent actually is going to walk away with a little over $3,000. You'll notice in this example, it's about half of what it is. And this is a very common thing, especially if you throw in that 5%. I've sat down with agents and I've actually worked out their money with them and they did not realize that they were walking away with maybe 40% of the total amount of money. And remember earlier when I said if it was their own deal and it still drops down to half of what it is that they do. So it's really important you understand the flow of your money if you become a real estate agent and you decide to work for one of these big franchise types that have team leaders that you are attached to. If you're getting stuff out of it, it works. If you're not, you really need to look at it. But let's just say you work for a different type of broker. And I'll just call them nice broker. And you also have no team leader. You're out on your own. You, you've earned your stripes. You're doing your own thing. And now you get paid that same $6,000. Well, you have no team leader, so you're giving them no money. Now your brokerage is still going to take some money. So let's just say this is a nice broker and he only takes 10% of what it is that you make. So you need to set aside $600 that's going to come off the top for that commission. And they also have some office fees because of different things of running the business. They're going to take 150. Now this might be higher. This might be lower. Some brokerages take a dollar amount versus a percentage. So you just need to find out what it is. But this is a typical one that you might run into which means that the agent in this case is actually going to walk away with a little over $5,000. So a lot better. They kept the majority of the money that they made. Now, there are some other possible splits that come off of every single deal. For example, they might have a partnership with another agent, so they co-list it or co-sell it, in which case they decide to share money. So they might pay them $500 for running around helping them out with the sale, or they might give up 50% of it. So that's a different type of split that might also play into a deal. Uh, if they took a, a referral from another agent, they might agree to give that agent 25%. So for example, if someone calls from California and reaches out to me here in Arizona, I might agree to that deal because I'm going to give them 25% of the deal, which means I start with 75% of it before all of my splits. Uh, another one is sometimes you use a transaction coordinator who's going to have a set fee for them helping you with your paperwork. And you sometimes have to reduce your commissions to keep the deal alive. You might pay for a home warranty or for a refrigerator or for a roofing inspection or whatever the case may be. There might be money that comes out of your commission to help keep that deal going. So don't always assume that you're going to get the full paycheck, if you will, from this entire thing. So as you can tell, you can get some good money based off of a home sale. So let's just pretend you sold one house a month. What would that look like? Well, first, once again, remember, homes vary greatly from city to city. Some people, they're looking at 100, 125, maybe 160, and some people are looking at three, four, five hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars depending upon the area. And sometimes the same state could have huge variations. You might sell something that's out on acreage for a lot less or a condo unit, or you might sell a million dollar home. Once again, everything's going to vary. I'm just using normal, regular, everyday numbers here and you just need to plug in your own numbers to get those. So once again, let's look at the team style. Remember as the team at that $200,000 transaction, at the end of the day, they made a little over 3,000. Well, if they sold 12 homes a year, they're looking at 12 homes times the 3,000, which means they're going to make about $38,000. By the way, the average real estate agent makes around thirty-five dollars to $38,000. That's what the statistics say. Now, keep in mind, that's averaging out the low-end homes and the high-end homes because most people don't even sell 12 homes a year. So I'm just saying that you come in and you're working hard and you're selling at least one home a year. Now, if you're going solo and you work for the nice broker, remember it was $5,200, in which case 12 homes a year, you're going to make about $63,000. Not bad. You're almost double what the average is for most 
people. So keep in mind, if you sold more than one a month, like let's just say you went one to two a month, most agents strive for about 24 homes if they can in their particular area, which is, means they're going to make a six figure business. Now you might be able to make a six figure business selling a lot less homes. In my area, we joke around that we sell twice as many homes as everybody else to make as much money as others, because for the most part, our market has always been a little bit lower than other ones. So you just need to look at your particular market to figure out what it is you can make, but you can make some good money being a real estate agent. The key is volume and making sure that you are creating leads and you're being consistent within that business. The other thing you really need to keep in mind, which gets a lot of realtors in trouble is you don't get to keep all of that money. Oh no, you've got money going out for taxes. You've got advertising marketing to get those leads. You've got pictures, posts, signs that you're going to have to deal with and you're going to have dues and fees, etc. So don't think that you're making that 38,000, 60,000 or a hundred thousand. You've got money coming out of that because after all, you are running a business and you are going to have business expenses. So just like a, a person who gets paid from any other nine to five job, they've got money that comes out for various things. So do you as a business owner. So you're going to have to pay your taxes and everything else that you do. On top of that, you're going to have business expenses as well. So the question becomes, is becoming a realtor right for you. And if you are thinking about becoming a realtor and you have some questions that you would like to ask, just drop some notes down here in the comments section here and I'll be glad to see if I can answer them and or make other videos for you on this particular career choice. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss any of the other videos that we have. Hit like if you liked how we broke this down for you. And this way other people will know it's a video that they really should see. And if you like podcasts, don't forget to listen to me on the Badass Business Owner Podcast. We release a new episode every Monday, but you can also listen right here on YouTube because every episode gets put here as well. Now get out there and be the badass business owner that I know you are. <laughs>